satisfied children now we are going to start the next chapter of this lesson do you all remember what we learned in the previous chapters children we learn about the interactions between plants and animals and animals and animals based on food okay children and also we learn about modes of nutrition of animals and under that we learn that there are three groups of animals based on the types of food they eat as carnivores herbivores and omnivores and we learn about food webs and food chains as well now we are going to continue the lesson using the food chains okay right we have an assignment to do build up food chains that can be seen in a pond a tank a forest a grassland and a decaying log prepare them in a creative way and exhibit them in your classroom now in the classroom you all can get together and do this as a group activity you can be as creative as you all can right you can uh, you can make it as a poster or maybe another presentation and you can add colors and pictures and make this type of presentations in a very creative way right so what are the things that you are going to add to this one how can you build up the food chain children now you already know what a food chain is and there are different links in a food chain so how to write a food chain of these type of environments children now remember when you write the food chains now here they have given different types of habitats right now i am going to show you all one food chain for one habitat but when you write this you have to write as many as examples that is because by writing more and more food chains you can understand this lesson better okay children right let's go through this one first you have to write a food chain in a pond let's write it here pond now what are the types of food chains now pond is an aquatic environment so you all know now all the food chains start with a green plant green plant is known as the producer okay children let's write we can write different different examples now as i told you all write a lot of food chains as much as you can okay children to practice this more and more i will start with uh, aquatic plants okay aquatic plant and what is the next link that we can write we can write small fish or we can write a uh, water snail water snail frog and we can write a uh, water snake water snake okay water snake the water snail feeds on aquatic plants the frog eats the water snail water snake eats the frog right so how many links are present in this uh, food chain children there are four links 1 2 3 4 i told you all one link means one organism right so always the first link is the producer it is always a plant right all the other links are considered as consumers that is because all those other links consume or use the energy produced by the green plants okay right so water snail is the first consumer frog is the second consumer water snake is the third consumer okay right we'll write the second one second habitat the first one pond the second one tank wherever tank 
that is also an aquatic environment. We can write aquatic plant. Aquatic plant. Then we can write small fish. And here we can write uh, a bird feeds on fish, kingfisher or stork we can write. Let's write, let's write stork. Right. This is the producer, first consumer, second consumer. There are three links. First link, second link, third link. Okay. Right. What is the next environment? Pond, tank, a forest. Now for a forest we can write many examples. Forest. We can write grass. Rabbit, fox, leopard. Right? Forest. Grass, the rabbit eats grass, the fox eats rabbit, and the leopard eats fox. So, this is the primary producer, the first link, second link, third link. They are known as the consumers. The first consumer, second consumer, and the third consumer. So, all together, there are four links to this food chain. Right? Okay. What is the next environment? Forest, grassland. Let's write. Grassland. Grassland. Grass. Grasshopper, lizard, cooper, Right? The grasshopper eats grass, the lizard eats grasshopper, and the cuckoo eats the lizard. So the producer and the three consumers. All together there are four links. The first link, second link, third link, and the fourth link. Okay? What is the next environment? Right. So we completed pond, tank, forest and the grassland and now finally decaying log. Now when it comes to the decaying log, is it a proper environment children? Yes. There are some type of animals who feed on the decaying log, right? The animals like weevils, termites and even earthworms feed on decaying logs, okay? Let's write Decaying log. Decaying log. So the food itself can be considered as the decaying log. Okay. Decaying log. Now log is a type of a plant part. So we can consider it as a plant. Okay. Plant part. Decaying log. So we will write uh, earthworm. 
earthworm feeds on this one and birds feed on earthworms and fox. Right children, so decaying log. The earthworm feeds on the decaying log, the birds feed on earthworms and the fox feeds on birds. You can even write leopard or uh, tiger feeds on fox. Okay children, so this is the primary producer and this is the first consumer, second consumer and the third consumer. And how many links are there? The first link, second link, third link and the fourth link. There are four links. Okay, children, so we'll go from the beginning. There are five different types of environments. The first one, pond. So water snail feeds on aquatic plants and the frog feeds on the water snail. The water snail feeds on the frog. Right, the second one, tank. Aquatic environment again. So the small fish feeds on aquatic plant and the stork feeds on small fish. Right, and the forest environment, the rabbit feeds on grass, the fox feeds on the rabbit and the leopard feeds on the fox. Right, grassland, grasshopper feeds on grass, the lizard feeds on the grasshopper and the cockle feeds on the lizard. Right, and finally decaying log. Decaying log, so earthworm feeds on the decaying log, birds feed on the earthworm and the fox fe feeds on the bird, right? We'll write here bird. Bird, right? The fox feeds on the bird, okay? So when we write different types of food chains like this, after writing them, go through them and you have to look at them to understand about the food chains better. Count how many links are there and try to write who is the producer, who is the first consumer, who is the second consumer likewise. Okay, children. So at the same time, we all know that the solar energy used by the producers or the primary producers to produce food that is known as photosynthesis. And in the plants, this energy present inside the food is stored as chemical energy. When each animal consumes the plants, that chemical energy goes through the food chain. Right, children? We'll move on to the next. Right. Read this, children. Green plants use solar power and provide energy to all the living beings on earth to live. How does this happen, children? This happens because of photosynthesis. Now, what are the factors affecting photosynthesis? Now, you all know all the plants in the presence of sunlight, they absorb sunlight and they obtain water from the roots, the soil water from the roots of the plants, right? So the factors affecting photosynthesis. What are the factors? Sunlight. Then soil water. Then what is the gas essential children? Carbon dioxide gas present in the environment. Carbon dioxide gas. And finally, the green plants can do photosynthesis. The green plants can produce their own food. Why? What is the reason? Because they are green. Why are they green? Because of the presence of a pigment called chlorophyll. So because, so because of that, the chlorophyll is also an important factor that is essential for photosynthesis. Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll. Right, children, these are the four factors affecting photosynthesis. So, what happens, children, during photosynthesis? 
carbon dioxide gas is absorbed. Carbon dioxide gas is absorbed by the plants. And so after absorbing carbon dioxide gas, along with all the other factors, food is produced. Along with food, another product, now this is known as a byproduct, apart from the main product, the main product of doing photosynthesis is producing food. Apart from food, another gas is produced, children. What is that? That is oxygen gas. So, oxygen gas is produced and it is sent out. Oxygen. Right, children? So, how important the plants are? Number one, they produce their own food. Now, what will happen if the plants cannot produce their own food? Can all the other living beings live, children? All the other animals will die if the plants cannot produce their own food or by doing photosynthesis. Because we all know now, after learning about the food chains, all the animals directly or indirectly depend on plants. So, if plants cannot produce their own food, all the animals ultimately die, right? Therefore, to maintain the existence of the world, the plants are very important because the plants do photosynthesis, the animals get the food then, the food chains can be continued, okay children? And at the same time, during the photosynthesis process, what happens as a byproduct, oxygen is given out. This oxygen is very important for us to inhale and thereby to produce energy. For respiration, we need oxygen. Right, children? So, at the same time, you all know during the photosynthesis process, carbon dioxide gas is absorbed by the plants, thereby the excess amounts of carbon dioxide gas present in the environment is reduced. So, excess amounts of carbon dioxide gas cause different types of problems like global warming, right? So, that is also controlled by plants, right children? Green plants use solar power and provide energy to all the living beings on earth to live. So, not only providing energy, all the other that absorbing carbon dioxide, giving oxygen and purifying the atmosphere is also very important, okay? So, the service rendered by green plants to the world is immense. Right, children? Okay, we'll move on to the next. Right. Look at this. The number of leopards in a jungle decreased due to some reason. So, the number of deer increased. Now, here the incident discuss, uh, talks about leopards and deer. Shall we write a food chain using these two animals? Look, starting from green plants. Green plants, you all know the deer, they are herbivores, they directly depend on green plants. We can write deer here. Right? Leopards, they are carnivores. They can depend on deer. Right. Look at this. The deer eat green plants. The leopards eat deer. Okay. Now we will read again. The number of leopards in a jungle decreased due to some reason. So, the number of deer increased. Due to the increase of deer, their food was not sufficient. Therefore, they had to compete with each other for food. Right? Due to the lack of food, the number of deer decreased again. Right. Let's see that. So, let's consider that there is a certain forest, only leopards and deers live in there, right? So, if all the leopards will die, what will happen, children? If all the leopards die, you all know that the number of deer is controlled by the number of leopards because leopards depend on deer, right? If all the leopards die, 
Then what will happen during the next time period? The number of deer will increase because there are no leopards to feed on them. Right children? And at the same time, if the number of deer increase, next what will happen? There are only limited amount number of plants, the limited forest cover present in the forest. So what will happen? If the number of deer keep on increasing at one point, they will not have enough food to eat because they directly depend on plants. So if the plant cover of the forest is limited, so if they keep on increasing, if the number of deer keep on increasing at one point, they will not have enough plants to feed on. So then what happens? More than the amount of food present, the number of deer are high. Right children? So then what happens children? They will compete. They will fight each other for food. There will be a competition. Right? So from the competition, the strongest one will win and the others will die. The one who can obtain food, the one who have access to food will survive and the others will die. Right children? But initially what will happen? If all the leopards die at the same time, Within a short period of time, the number of deer will increase because there are no leopards to feed on them. But at the same time, when the number of deer, when they come to the maximum capacity, there will be no more food for them. Then one by one, they will start to die without food. See how important this incident is, children, which means so what is the decision, what is the conclusion that you can come up with after going through the story, children? When you consider a food chain, all the links are equally important, right? Because the increase or decrease of one link directly depends on the increase or decrease of the other link. Okay, children, when the number of leopards suddenly decrease what happens the number of deer suddenly increase when the number of deer suddenly increase what happens children the amount of plant the number of green plants they will suddenly decrease because they consume the green plants right then again when the number of plants the amount of green plants suddenly decrease what happens because uh, the deer they don't have food the number of deer suddenly decrease again right children okay so, the number of plants and animals in the environment is controlled and remained balanced due to this mutual relationship that exists between the links of food chain. So, all the links are equally important. Right, children? So, all the links of a food chain render a great service in maintaining the balance of the environment. Right, children? Maintaining the balance of the environment. Therefore, if an animal that belongs to a particular link in a food chain is destroyed or removed, it affects the existence of other links in the food chain. When the number of leopards, when all the leopards die, what happens? It will suddenly increase the number of deer. Right? So this may lead to a decrease or an increase in the number of other links, right? This may lead to a decrease or an increase in the number of other links. Therefore, you can understand that all living beings are important to maintain the balance of the environment. This is very, very important, children. All the living beings have a certain role, a certain part in the environment. They all are equally important. We can't say that the humans are important than the other animals, right? We can't keep on killing animals because of that reason. Because including plants, all the animals, all the living organisms are equally important to maintain the balance of the environment. Right, children? What is this animal, children? This is called giant panda. Right, let's go through this. Have you heard about pandas that live in the forests of China? Panda is a herbivorous animal who feeds on plants. But it has 
a certain specific type of food, only type of food. What is that? This animal has faced the threat of extinction because its only food is bamboo. Right, children? So, because of this reason, the organization called IUCN. What is IUCN, children? The organization called IUCN. IUCN means International Union for Conservation of Nature. Right? International Union for Conservation of Nature. Right, children? So, they name this animal, the giant panda, as an endangered species. What is the meaning of an endangered species, children? An endangered species means a certain species, a plant or animal species that's with a very less number of organisms or animals or plants and at a high risk of extinction. Right, children? So, then what happened? The IUCN named this animal, the giant panda, as an endangered species. What is the reason for this, children? What is the reason for decreasing the number of this giant panda? That is because they solely depend on this bamboo, right? Their only food is bamboo. Now, think about us. We depend on different, different types of food, right? We eat rice, we eat other fruits and vegetables and different types of food items we depend on. If we don't have one type of food, we can depend on the other type of food. Right, children? But it's not the case with this animal. Its only food is bamboo. If there is no bamboo, they will die of hunger. This is what happened, children. Right? So they kept on decreasing. The numbers kept on decreasing and they finally came to a number which is highly uh, at risk of extinction. Right, children? So that's why this organization, IUCN, named this animal as an endangered species. Right, children? So now, anyway, this organization took steps to conserve this animal and thereby to increase the number. Okay? So now steps to conserve these animals have already been taken. Right? So... Recently, the IUCN named this animal, upgraded this animal from endangered species to vulnerable species, right? Vulnerable species means the risk is still there, but it's much better than the endangered species. Endangered species means the number of animals living are, of a certain species, the number of animals living are very, very less, right? When they can increase the, by conserving or by any method, when they can increase the number of animals or the plants of a certain species, then they name this certain species as a vulnerable species. But still the risk is there. They still have to keep on conserving this animal. Right? Okay. But the good news is the numbers are currently increasing. Okay, children? So... Animals feed on a variety of foods. When there is a large diversity in food consumed by animals, their existence is more established. Like us, as I told you all, if we don't have one thing to eat, we can depend on something else, right? If a certain organism, so let's say if a certain animal feeds on different, different, a large like variety of food items, even if one type of food item is not there, it's okay. It's no problem. That is because we have other food items to depend on. But these type of animals who depend only on one type of food item, they are at high risk of extinction. Right, children? So that also you have to understand when we learn about food chains and food webs, if there are animals who depend on different or large number of other food items, they are in the safe side, okay? So, by animals, their existence is more established, right? When there is a large diversity in food consumed by animals, their existence is more established, right, children? So, every animal has a right to live free in the environment. 
because they all have a part to play in the environment. They all are equally important to maintain the balance of the environment. Right, children? So you as well as the other living organisms are an important part of the environment. So it's your duty not to harm animals or plants. Sometimes some people think like animals like snakes because they are harmful. We have to kill them. No. They are really important to maintain the balance of the environment. They will not harm us unless we harm them. Right, children? Therefore, it's our duty as children who learn science, it's your duty to conserve the, these type of species and to protect the environment. We have completed the lesson, children. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson and you watched some videos on some animals as well. Now we are going to see the summary to see what we have learned. Right. We'll see. Animals are categorized into three major groups according to their feeding habits. What are they? They are herbivores, carnivores and omnivores. Right. Animals that consume only plant or plant materials are known as herbivores. Animals that consume only flesh of other animals are known as carnivores. Animals that consume both plant materials and flesh of other animals are known as omnivores. Right? Green plants that produce food within themselves are known as producers. We learn this in the food chain. A linear sequence that starts from a green plant and shows the flow of energy from one living organism to the other is known as a food chain, right? A diagram that shows the interrelationships among animals and plants for food is known as a food web, okay? The existence of every living organism is very important for the balance of the ecosystem, the environment. The green plants produce food using the energy of sunlight. This energy is transferred among animals through food chains and food webs. So we have completed the lesson, but we have to do the exercise. Remember children, before you watch the exercise videos, you all have to do all the exercise by yourselves. And then when I explain the answers, you all can compare your answers.